Hi, I am Nico D. So today I'm wearing my Armbian t-shirt. So that means this video has to do something with Armbian. So I normally review ARM single board computers like this one, the Old World N2. So these are not that powerful, but last week I got the pleasure of working on a 32 core ARM server at 3.3 GHz. So that was very impressive. That was very fast for an ARM SOC. So this week I've got something else, something very special. So you all know that we are having a donation round to buy a Threadripper server. The server is bought, but it is not yet paid for it. We are almost there. We've got about three fourths of the total funding that we needed. So the server is already put together. Everything is already bought. We just have to pay for it yet. So this server comes with the Threadripper 3990X. So that is a 64 core CPU with 128 threads so two threads per cpu core so that is very impressive so compared to that arm server which only had 32 threads this one has got four times more threads of course cores are not threads so what are threads see it as being a cafe with only one door it is hard to put all people in at the same time with one door but if a cafe would have two doors people could come in on different sides so that means two different threads so two access channels to the cpu so per core there are two threads so that means every core can do two tasks at the same time this is important threads are important two threads doesn't mean it is the power of two cores it is still the power of one core but you gain about one fourth of the performance of one core so to have 128 threads is just amazing. So I normally review ARM single board computers, but the tools that I am using for these are not good enough anymore for the Threadripper. Because the Threadripper goes way too fast through all my benchmarks. I use the BMW Blender benchmark because it takes a very long time on SBCs. And that way I can check what the maximum temperature is of a board. But now it goes so fast that I can't even check what the maximum temperature is. So I will have to find new benchmark tools. I've already done a more demanding blender task on the Threadripper, but even that was way too short. So it isn't the best review you can get. Just know I'm a single board computer reviewer and not a server reviewer. But I've done my best and so here we go! So first let us take a look at the build process of this beast. So here you see the bare bone motherboard, so it's an ASRock Rack TRX 40D8 2N2T. How do they come up with these names? So the first thing that got installed was the NVMe, so dual NVMe, 2 times Corsair Force Series MP600, 1TB NVMe's. And here the memory went in, so the memory is 8 times 32 gigabytes. Kingston Server Premiere DDR4 at 3200 megahertz with error correction. So this was a question from Igor. Do we need error correction or should we go for a faster memory? So I started to investigate this and thanks to the videos of level 1 I found out that error correction would be better. The CPU also cannot handle very fast RAM. So 4000 MHz would not have worked with the CPU and with this motherboard. So we went for the error correction instead of the faster RAM. There is also a dual SATA DOM for the boot. Everything is water cooled, though there was not enough space for the radiator inside of the case. So Igor put it outside of the case. I don't mind if you look at my PC, it has never been closed in all its time. So I am more for functioning and not for looks. So I again got SSH access to this server. So everything is done with the terminal. So on the right you see HTOP. You see all the available threads. So 128 threads. It almost takes up the whole display. So this is really impressive to see. So the first thing I will do is again a single core 7-zip benchmark. This will take a very long time because it wants to do 128 threads into one core. 7-zip only sees there are 128 threads, but I only gave it access to one, so it wants to do 128 in one. So this is different compared to ARM CPUs. So this is an AMD CPU. This can turbo boost, 
So for a single core task it can go upwards of 4.2 GHz. This is also highly customizable, so you can overclock it like hell. Right now it is at a rather normal configuration. I will talk a bit about overclocking it to 4 GHz with all cores. Igor has done that, Igor has done the tests. And it's impressive, it's just amazing. First this. So you can see that it is running at around 30 degrees celsius. So this is very low. Okay there is only one task, but this is still very low. If we do lscpu then we see that the single core task is running at 4.343 gigahertz. Do know amd gigahertz are not the same as intel gigahertz. AMD CPUs can do a bit more per clock than Intel CPUs. So this is really amazing. You could even use it for gaming. So you can see it is a 64 bit system of course. With 128 threads. So from 0 to 127. So 0 is the first one. If you are a programmer then you know that. So 64 cores. The base clock is 2.9 GHz. So this is when all cores are used, then it will go to 2.9 GHz. So the boost clock is 4.3 GHz. And the minimum clock is 2.2 GHz. So it will never go lower than that. Since it is water cooled, that is no problem. This is also very cool to see. I can already tell you that the system consumes 100 Watt in idle. So that is as much as the ARM server when it was used maxed out. And 400 watts when all cores are used. But this is without an overclock. It can go up to more than 600 watts with an overclock. And here's CPU info per core. So a bit more information for the nerds to devour. This also shows that the cache size is 512 kilobytes. Just look at it. I don't have to read it all. I bet you can read it too. So now let's go to the result of the single core benchmark. I was installing Blender while doing this test. There were enough cores left to do this without hindering the benchmark. So the result is 4545. So that is pretty impressive. But it was clocked to 4.3 GHz also. So that is what made this result so impressive. So compared to other devices that I tested. So the Ampere 32 core ARM server at 3.3 GHz did 2745. The A73 of the Oldroid N2 Plus at 2.4 GHz does 2508. The A53s at 2 GHz 1777. The Raspberry Pi with a 32 bit operating system at 1.5 GHz got 1963. Do know with a 32 bit operating system 7 zip performs better. So the single core performance of the Threadripper is already very impressive. But it has got way more than one core. Do know it is the only one that can turbo. So all the others don't have a turbo boost clock. And that makes a big difference. Next I did a 4 thread test to see how it behaves with 4 threads. But this is still nothing for this big server with 128 threads of course. And the temperature was between 32 and 35 celsius. So 4 cores maxed out is still nothing for this server. It's still turboed to 4.3 gigahertz while 4 threads are used. I've also tried it with 8 threads then it goes to 4.25 gigahertz. So you do need a big task with many threads before the turbo goes down a lot. So here is the result of 4 threads, 18,060 MIPS. So this is already very impressive. The 4A73 big cores of the Oldroid N2 Plus at 2.4 GHz only got 9366. So that is half of what the Threadripper can do with 4 cores. Now let's stop tickling this server with small tasks and give it a big task. So 128 threads maxed out 7zip. This is so cool to see all those threads springing into life. I had never seen something like this before. And it was awesome.
It is like the power of God. Even this doesn't make a big impact on the temperature, so the temperature is rising towards 40 degrees Celsius now. This is the great thing of water cooling. It takes a long time before the temperature starts rising. With a heatsink the temperature starts rising immediately, so with water cooling you can have a big boost in performance. So the result of 7-zip decompression, all cores is 391,809 MIPS. This is just an amazing score. This is something I have never seen. Not even close. And the result of the Threadripper at 3.9 GHz overclock was 433,705. So that is 5 times more than an Ampere 32 core server. It also consumes 6 times as much. With the Threadripper at the default clocks, the Ampere server is 4 times slower. But it also consumes 4 times less. So Threadripper and the Ampere server are neck to neck on performance per watt. Threadripper is a lot more advanced and a lot newer. So ARM has got a lot more potential to improve versus AMD. But it is quite amazing that AMD can match the power per performance of this server. Intel doesn't come close to it. Now the BMW Blender benchmark. So for the Ampere 32 core ARM server this was 8 minutes 27 seconds. I've done it yesterday on the Oldroid N2 Plus headless. This was 30 minutes. But for the Threadripper this was just a piece of cake. It flew through it with all 128 threads. It was only 510 tiles. So every thread only had to do it about 4 times to get the result. All cores were clocked at 3 GHz for this. And it even was only reaching 40 degrees Celsius. And the result was 30 seconds. That is just amazing. I do believe that Blender has been optimized a lot for Threadripper. And the ARM server didn't get any optimization for this. So with only 30 seconds I was not able to stress this machine enough. So I let it render an animation instead of one picture. This gave it a more continuous load. But I still was not able to get it above 50 degrees Celsius. So it is really awesome. It is amazing. How can it stay that cold? Okay it is water cooled but so many cores all maxed out. And it still doesn't go very high in temperature. I am baffled by this. This is an amazing server. This is not yet overclocked. When overclocked of course it goes a lot higher. And also when it is maxed out for a very long time. Then all the water will heat up and then it can't keep its temperature that low. To give it a bigger load I downloaded the Blender Barbershop benchmark. This is a lot more demanding. This is a lot bigger than the BMW Blender benchmark. This is 6912 tiles that it needs to do. So the Threadripper can stretch its arms a bit more. I don't have anything to compare this to. I just wanted to do this because it was a bigger load. And in the future when I've got better devices I can then compare this with this server. And so the result for this was 2 minutes 18 seconds. So this still was very fast. With an SBC this would take ages. I would not want to do it with a modern SBC. And for sure not with an old SBC. But for the future SBCs, if there would be one with 16 cores or so, then I can again do this task. And now as last, I will do SBC Bench. So this is a script that is written by Thomas Kaiser. He used to be a developer at Armbian. So this does a lot of tests, like 7-zip, single core and multi-core, CPU miner, tiny mem bench and a lot more. It also keeps up the temperatures and even the frequencies of the CPU. So this is a very handy tool to benchmark devices. So here you can see on the left the results of the Threadripper 
and on the right the results of the Ampere 32 core ARM server. I will just show this, I will not say anything about it, just look at it. So you can still donate for this server, any help is very appreciated. You can also donate to me and I will give 50% this week from my donations to Armbian for this build server. I'm very happy I could get private access to this server. This is just an amazing thing to see. ARM still has to do a lot of catching up, but it is already able to compete in power per performance and it should do even better in the future. AMD is doing an amazing job in improving x86 architecture. I didn't think this was possible. Intel was a total flat line, nothing happened anymore. They had 4 core desktop CPUs and it stayed like that for a long time. And then AMD came with Ryzen and Threadripper and even Epic. And they blew Intel just out of the water. So goodbye Team Blue. I am Team Red for now. I am Team Nobody actually but well. If you look at the results then you have to choose for Team Red. They've now also launched a very good video card. So they are even competing with Nvidia while also competing with Intel. I think this could become one of the biggest companies ever in a few years. So that's it for today, I think I've said enough. Please like my video and subscribe to my channel. Please donate for the Armbian cause for this server. Thank you all, see you all later, bye!